Hello and welcome to The Man Who Kept Dying. In today's video, I would like to cover the topic of keeping a positive attitude and share with you a story that happened to me a month ago through which I believe it was important to try to be as positive as possible. So, on Friday, the 9th of August, just before having lunch, the alarm of my fridge went off. And it's the alarm that normally indicates that the door has not been closed properly and you need to close it. Except the door is closed, completely flushed, and there's no reason for the alarm to go off. What I do is that I unplug the fridge just to see if it's going to do something. I plug it back and this little annoying beep comes back right away. Have a listen. And yes, the fridge would do that every 30 freaking seconds. And because it's quite an open space, you have the kitchen, the living, the dining, there's no escaping that noise. After lunch, a call with customer support indicates that they cannot send a technician before Friday the week after. So it means that I have to leave for more than a week with that crazy, loud, annoying beep. And I'm not prepared to do that. So of course, I accept the appointment with a technician, but I prepare myself to find a solution and at least, at least, stop the annoying beep. So I go online, do a bit of research, can't really find a solution because I cannot find anything that is related to the exact fridge model that I do have. And I resort to sort of like, uh, not start to dismantle the fridge, but access the circuit board and try to understand uh, which wire is actually linked to the alarm bell so that I can disconnect it. And I start by having to unplug wire after wire. I'm no electrician, but I can still read the diagram. I found roughly a set of 10 to 12 wires that are linked to the door, but I have to test them one by one. And every time I test one, I have to wait five minutes before I can plug the fridge on again, because it's kind of a security measure from the fridge. In doing all that, I almost forgot that I had a doctor's appointment. And it's one of those appointments that there's such a delay before, between the moment you call and the moment you get the appointment, like three to four months, that basically you don't want to miss it. And I got so caught up in trying to fix that crazy annoying for me beep from the alarm that I almost forgot about the doctor's appointment. So I drop everything, get into the car and drive to the appointment. On my way, I'm thinking, there's no way I'm going to make it. Like literally, I'm already late for the appointment itself. But I want to give it a go. I call uh, the doctor's secretary and ask if I can still have my appointment uh, because I'm on my way and I'm just facing a bit of a delay. When you're in luck, you're in luck. Because the secretary says, yes, uh, I've just talked to the doctor, that's fine, she can receive you. Uh, how long are you going to be? Okay, 10 minutes maximum, it's perfectly acceptable, uh, we'll wait for you. I get there, not too late, but a bit later than I should have been, get my appointment. But because I left in a rush, I had completely forgotten to take all my papers with me. So, health insurance cards, payment cards, and so on, I had none of that with me. I just tapped the keys to the house, the keys to the car. Anyway, when you're in luck, you're in luck. We managed to find a way to get the insurance papers and payment to be processed and so on. I go back home, I go back right away at figuring out which wire it is. Eventually, late in the afternoon, I do find it. Happy days. The fridge seems to be functioning okay and there's no more loud, annoying Let's wait for the technician to come the week after. Two days prior to the technician visiting, food goes off in the fridge. So it's a fridge-freezer combo, and the fridge is on top, the freezer at the bottom. The, fr 
freezer is functioning perfectly fine. The food is really cold. But the fridge part, it seems, does not operate anymore. So now, I don't have a fridge. The technician comes in a couple of days later, runs the little analysis, and right away says, it's very, very, very weird, because the fridge still is under warranty. It's less than two years old. This brand is normally a reputable one, yet you have three different issues that are not linked one with the other. And I have never seen that in my life. In that moment, I can only smile. Because I'm thinking, that's exactly the type of sign you need to confirm to you that something's about to happen. What? You don't know yet. What's important? Keep a positive attitude through whatever is going to happen. The technician says, all right, I'm going to order the parts so we can repair the fridge, but it's going to be, or to take a bit longer because it's summer holidays and in Europe and specifically in France, a lot of uh, companies or factories tend to shut down in August or for most of August. As a result, probably the parts will not be collected before two to three weeks and give, you know, take another week for me to come around. So it's probably a month before the fridge is repaired. No problem. We arrange for a loan fridge to be delivered. So we're on a Saturday now. I'm being told by the customer support that the loan fridge will be delivered, but it will only be delivered from Wednesday, the week that follows, because they don't have any available ones at the minute. Of course, it's summer, and now I don't even have a fridge, I just have a freezer. I can make do, it's okay if it's just for a few days, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be okay. Fast forward to Wednesday, the delivery of the loan fridge happens, and I'm being told that I have to wait 24 hours before plugging the fridge because it's just been through transportation and if I don't wait uh, that long it could actually mess around with some parts of the fridge and make it more fragile, whatever. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'll wait 24 hours. 24 hours later, this is starting to be quite a long story now, I plug the fridge, the lone fridge, and it blows the fuses of the house. I can't believe it. I'm thinking maybe I didn't plug it in the right socket. So I move the fridge that is broken or faulty, move the lone fridge uh, to the location of the faulty one, plug it to the right socket because I know this one can handle a higher voltage. It blows the fuses of the property once more. And I'm thinking it's just not possible. At that point, I just laugh. If I, if I did swear on a Friday afternoon by really trying to find the right, the correct wire to unplug, this time I can only laugh at the situation because I'm thinking this is getting almost like a comical, you know, and it, of course it makes a great story to tell and to share, but you can either be negative about it or you can be positive. And by being positive, the message I sort of receive is, well, you know, there, there's no choice. I've got other things to do, but I'm going to go in person to the store and I'm going to negotiate a new loan fridge. I'm going to say, you know, this, this is the story. I'm not going to come and say, this is unacceptable. You need to do something for me. Uh, your customer support is rubbish. The fridge you've loaned me is broken. No, I'm quite the opposite. I go in with a big smile on my face and I would say, hey, you would just not believe what is happening with the loan fridge I received yesterday. And I proceed to tell the story. And of course, everyone just like smile and say, wow, wow, this is like, you're so unlucky, but you seem to be taking it with like absolute, um, a positive mindset. But what is important perhaps at that moment, the manager of the store was present and he overhears the conversation. And right away he says, hang on a second, sir. This is not supposed to happen that way. I'm really sorry about that. You'll have a fridge uh, by the end of the day. So he calls another store, but they don't have any available fridges. And we agree that basically uh, we is going to loan us one of the fridges uh, from the store. So like a brand new fridge, but it's like the entry level type of fridge. And basically it's a very, very, very small fridge. 
But at that time, I'm thinking, a small fridge is better than no fridge at all, especially in the middle of summer. We don't have a really hot summer this year in France, but it's warm enough. And so, here you are, I've got a little student fridge for the time being. A few days later, I receive another call from customer support. They tell me that basically the fridge that is faulty, my main fridge, is not going to be repairable. They cannot really tell me why, which upsets me a little bit, but not because it's not repairable, but more from an eco-friendliness standpoint. I think it is like a pity when you sell uh, kitchen equipment and there's um, a score or a mark in France and maybe throughout Europe that basically tells you the degree of how easy it is to repair uh, a specific piece of equipment. And the idea behind that is not to waste anything. So I'm being told that it cannot be repaired and therefore I'm going to get a brand new fridge. I even got to select which fridge I want. Basically, I get the money from the previous one to cover the cost of the new one. So essentially, brand new fridge for free and positive. The warranty is being extended again because it's like starting with a brand new fridge. And what is even more interesting with that story is that in the end, the fridge I am getting, the new fridge, is actually a different brand that is on sale. And therefore, I'm even earning a bit of money, about 250 euros to spend on something else when I want. So happy days. The new fridge has yet to be delivered. So I'm still living with that student fridge. There's a bit of a delay in there. But, you know, at the end of the day, I can only, I can only look at it and say it's temporary, as is everything in life. And perhaps that's the lesson to be learned here gives you appreciation for what you have. The point I wanted to make with that video was simply that I chose to keep a positive attitude throughout that process. But I could have gone with a negative attitude. And one thing I'm going to share with you, I don't know what the outcome would have been with a negative attitude. Perhaps it would be the same, perhaps it would not. All I know is that I went with what I believed was the best attitude to have trying to smile, trying to laugh at the situation, knowing that it happened before to me over different things. And there always is a resolution that very often ends up with something better than what I initially had. So I was not too worried. But anyway, the point was to say, I think it is very important. And especially, uh, yes, you have to be assertive at times, you know, when things aren't supposed to go or happen a certain way, that's perfectly acceptable. But that doesn't mean mistreating people or disrespecting people. I think it's more an idea of taking things with as positive an attitude as you can and actually realizing that, at least that's the case for me, when I do that, when I practice that, when I'm grateful for what I have, I always get a better outcome. So there you are, this is more of a practical video with a real life example about keeping a positive attitude. The next video is about letting go and surrendering. And in this one, we will dive into the more spiritual aspect of that positive attitude and letting go of the outcome of what could possibly be. Hope you enjoyed the video. Wishing you a great day wherever you are. Until the next video, stay positive. And of course, be conscious, my friends.